Hello there, my name is JD and this is an attempt at making the subject of statistics simple and easy for everyone. During the course of my experience with various corporates, I have seen that many of us want to move to process excellence, where statistical analysis plays a very important role. However, due to sheer unawareness of the fact that statistics could be as simple as any other discipline, many of the good minds tend to back out of the race. Here I will publish a series of short conceptual videos covering the basics, intermediate and then advanced statistics keeping in mind the audience demography. My first video here is on basic data types in statistics, primarily answering the questions a beginner would have. So here we go. Basic data types and statistics. The very first thing we will see is types of statistics followed by data types, measurement scales and finally a self-assessment. So what exactly is statistics? We can find a gamut of definitions in various textbooks and journals. However, I personally feel that statistics is a data game. Yes, a game that many of us love to play, and many more are willing to explore it. Whatever we do in statistics is data. What comes in is raw data, what we process is raw data, and what goes out is refined, meaningful, and actionable data. Let's have a quick look at how we do it. Collect, organize, analyze, interpret, and present. It's as simple as it is. We start by collecting data with a well-prepared data collection plan. It could be live data or historical data. We organize it as per our project requirement. Analyze it using various statistical tools and techniques. We interpret the results as per statistical guidelines and finally present the findings to relevant stakeholders. By the way, statistics broadly are of two types. Descriptive, which offers a concise data summary and can be displayed both numerically and graphically. For example, tracking the arrival time of students in class or number of international flights taking up per minute at the XYZ airport. Both these data sets can be displayed numerically as well as graphically. And inferential statistics where we make inferences about the population from a random sample. For example, a random sample of all pins produced in a mill. Since it is not possible to measure all pins, which could be in millions, we take a statistically valid sample to make inference about the population. And yes, we will come back to the statistically valid thing in our video on sampling, so let's not worry about it now. Let's move on to data types. So what is data? Let's keep it simple again as promised. Output of any activity is data. Think about it for a minute. Anything we do results in a set of data, which can be further organized and analyzed. It is of prime importance, let me emphasize, prime importance to know the type of data you are working with because that decides the course of your analysis. In statistics, type of data would determine which test tool or technique to be used. In statistics, we have two types of data, quantitative, which can be quantified or given a numeric value, and qualitative, which cannot be assigned a numeric value. Quantitative could be continuous, where between any two data points there could be innumerable data points such as length, weight, height, temperature, etc. That is all values on the real number line. Or discrete, where we cannot have a fraction. It's all count data. Example, number of pens in your bag, number of students in the class, etc. Qualitative data could be discrete only. For example, any attribute data defining a characteristic like good, bad, sweet, etc. And rank data where any two data points are related in such a way that they are either less than, greater than, or equal to each other. Thus creating an ordered rank. For example, review rating of any product or service. One very important point to note here is the indecisiveness that many people get into while dealing with percentage data. Remember, it depends on the context and the scenario. Analysts mostly take it as discrete, considering the fact that the numerator and denominator used to reach the percentage are discrete. At times, people consider it pseudo-continuous and carry out the analysis accordingly. Some other people will also look at the available sample size to reach to a conclusion. However, till the time you gain more insight through our upcoming statistics videos, I would suggest you to strongly consider percentage as discrete. Let's move on to our next slide now, measurement scales. Well, measurement scales are used to categorize our data. These are of four types, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal is name only scale, so it just has a name and identity and nothing else attached to it. Ordinal data has an identity and a magnitude. Interval data will have an identity, a magnitude, and equal intervals. And a ratio measurement scale will have identity, magnitude, equal intervals, and a minimum value of zero. That is, the starting point would be zero. 
A quick look into the examples will make it more clear. Let's look at the example for nominal. If you remember your college forms or school forms, there is a question which says, what is your gender? The answer is on a nominal scale, male, female. Think of ordinal data, a customer satisfaction survey, where you have been asked to rate the service, whether you are satisfied, very satisfied, not satisfied, less satisfied, dissatisfied. So satisfaction here is the identity and magnitude is very less neutral somewhat. So that is ordinal scale of measurement. When we talk about an interval scale of measurement, let's think of time. Time has units. Time is the identity. Magnitude is one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. And between any two major units of time, the intervals will be of equal length. That describes an interval scale. Talking about the ratio scale of measurement, let's look at an example, which is rabbit to carrots. So if you look at this example, we can see what's the ratio of rabbits to carrots. Probably it's one is to two. So every rabbit gets two carrots. And this can never go below zero. So it has an identity. It has a magnitude, the intervals are equal, and the minimum value is zero. So this is about measurement scales. Now let's move on to the self-assessment. So who is going to build the cat today? Oh, well, it's not that difficult. Let's start with data types first. So the first question for all of us is number of road accidents in a month in XYZ city. So what kind of data is it? Since it talks about number, so it has to be discrete, right? Next one, customer satisfaction survey results measured on a scale of one to five. So it's talking about a scale. It's talking about measuring on a scale of one to five. That is assigning ranks. So it becomes a discrete again. The next one, time taken to deliver a product to the customer in days. Since it is talking about time taken in days, it could be two days, two and a half days, 2.7 days, three days, three and a half days, anything. So it becomes continuous because we are able to break the time, the number of days into innumerable data points. The fourth one, percentage of people who are absent in a class. Percentage, discrete, straightforward, as we have discussed in our previous slides. Sales revenue of a product for each quarter measured in dollars. So when we talk about money, when we talk about dollars again between a dollar and a dollar two you can divide the interval into multiple layers multiple units so it becomes a continuous data let's move on to identifying measurement scales now the first example very big big small very small so when we talk about measurement scale if you remember a measurement scale has certain characteristics Think of the first one, identity. So does this example is an identity? Yes. Identity here is the size, big and small. What, what is vary then? Vary is the magnitude. So we have an identity and a magnitude. And this example becomes an example of an ordinal scale of measurement. The next one is road and street. These are just names, so it's nominal data. Let's talk about height. The most important point to remember here when we talk about height is we know that height is a continuous data and height can never go below zero. So just close your eyes, it's ratio, it's as easy, as easy as it is. The last one is temperature. So temperature has an identity, temperature has a magnitude, temperature has an interval. But it can also go below zero, so it cannot be ratio. We have to stop at interval, so temperature is an interval scale of measurement so it's time to say goodbye now we have completed what we had decided in today's video however before we go let me say a sincere thank you to all of you for taking out time to listen and watch this video our next video will be live in a couple of days so i would request you to subscribe to stay updated and I'm eagerly waiting for your suggestions, your feedback, 
your requests for on-demand videos if you have any if there is any specific topic that comes to your mind and you want to know about it do please let me know you can do any of the two things either post a comment or get in touch with me on linkedin and i will definitely answer your requests so signing off for now stay blessed and cheers